morning, and we will begin with 15 minutes of topical questions. I call Mr. Fergal McKinney. Mr. McKinney. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And could, could I ask the Minister, uh, could he outline to the House if he intends to retain student governors within further education colleges? Uh, I thank the member for his question. Uh, it is something that we are considering in the round. Um, student governance uh, alongside the wider governance issue in further education uh, is something that we do need to be conscious of, particularly as colleges move to become uh, multi-million pound uh, businesses. Um, there are a number of different aspects in which uh, student participation and govern governance of the colleges uh, can be uh, taken forward, and that includes the issue of student representation on, on boards of governors, but there's also other aspects too in terms of sabbatical posts, which could be extended into the FE sector, and also the creation of student councils, and all of those are under discussion, um, including with the NUS USA. Mr. McKinney, for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Isn't it important that boards of governors reflect a younger person's perspective? And could the minister consider capacity building and training for students in this role uh, to enable better governance skills? Yeah, I'm certainly happy to consider the point that the member makes about uh, capacity building, but it's also important to bear in mind that boards of governors um, aren't simply there to represent a, a series of different sectoral interests and try to fashion a, a, a position, a common position, out of, out of the different dynamics there. Uh, they are there as, in, as individuals who all of which can take a collective view of what is in the best interest, not just of their college, but also the sector and the Northern Ireland economy. I call Mr Alec Atwood. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Given, uh, Minister, that you have appointed a team to review teacher education in Northern Ireland, and given your ambition that there should be a more shared and integrated approach, in respect to which there is merit, could you explain to the House why it is that you've gone on a solo run in respect of a shared and integrated outcome? And would it not be better that this was coordinated in a comprehensive way with the Minister of Education? Well, thank the member for his question and his interest and, and indeed uh, his um, endorsement that there is merit in moving towards a more shared and integrated um, system. Um, we have appointed um, Patsy Salberg, who is an international figure, and four other individuals, all of whom are of international standing, uh, to take forward the stage two of the review of, of teacher training. And in doing that, we have had discussions uh, with my colleague, the, the Minister of, of Education. He has clear responsibilities in relation to the nature of teacher training in terms of the content and also setting the numbers. It's my responsibility as Minister for Employment and Learning uh, to resource uh, the, the different uh, providers, the different institutions, and currently we have a situation which is not uh, sustainable. Uh, but we have consulted um, and discussed uh, these different aspects uh, and continue to do so on a regular basis. I note that the Minister has not denied that he is on a solar run in this matter. Putting that aside for a second, given that you say that you wish to have agreement in relation to the future shape, future shape of teacher training in uh, the north of Ireland, do you accept that if a teacher training college at the end of this process rightfully decides that its autonomy, location and role is important and needs to be protected? Do you accept that in those circumstances you will not reach the threshold of agreement that you aspire to? Well, well first of all, the member uh, in particular should well know the, the nature of the relationship um, and the authority of ministers in relation to their own departments and also uh, to, to their colleagues. Uh, and he was very keen to ensure that others in the executive and the assembly understood that point as well. So um, I hope he's not shifting his position as he moves uh, to, the, to the back benches. I assume also that the member is referring to the situation pertaining uh, to St Mary's. Um, and again, it's disappointing that the SDLP are taking a very particular approach to this in terms of representing one particular institution rather than looking to the best interests of the sector as a whole and the future of the Northern Ireland education system as a whole. The fundamental point here in all of this is that whether you're talking about St Mary's or the system as a, as a whole, it is not financially sustainable today and it will not be the case in, as we look to, to the future. So we have to, to make some changes to ensure that we actually have an affordable system and also one that actually provides teachers that actually fit for a much more diverse and shared society as we, hopefully we, we move in that direction. I, Mr Michael Copeland is not in his place, so I call Mr Paul Gervin. Thank you. Minister, uh, just wondering from a departmental point of view, what instruction 
is given to uh, colleges uh, and universities in relation to, uh, as they don't have a uniform, in relation to clothing which is suitable to wear to college? Um, Mr. The Principal Deputy Speaker, the, the acoustics here are, are very weak, and I, I barely caught that. But um, I gathered that the member was talking about uh, standards address in terms of, of colleges. Um, those are uh, uh, matters of detail for the colleges themselves uh, to, to take forward. And um, I would suggest that this is a, probably a prelude to discussing various uh, symbols that may be associated with one section of the community um, or, or another. And I would stress that it's for the colleges to control that. But all of the colleges um, have a commitments towards equality and, and good relations. And that will be reflected in, in the manner in which they, they address issues that may, may or may not cause tension in terms of the workplace uh, or the, the, the learning environment. Uh, can I just point out, members, it's useful to ensure that the microphone at your desk is pointed towards you. I know Paul has made his adjustment now, but for the benefit of other members, Paul, supplement. Thank, thank the Minister for his, his answer. And, uh, in, in his response, he did allude to the fact that uh, each college must uh, have this put in place. I thought those directives came from Central because understanding that one college in my own uh, constituency uh, made an instruction in relation to wearing of, of uh, football tops, uh, yet no direction was given to another section of the community that seemed to feel it's perfectly all, all right to attend wearing GAA tops. Uh, I mean, again, I thank the member for, for his question. And, I mean, if, if he wants to write me, to me with the specifics around this, I'll happily uh, take a look and um, raise the matters that he's raised directly with the colleges um, con concerned. Uh, in all of this, the colleges will have the, the ability to take advice, whether it's from my own department or, for, or from the, the Equality Commission. And he is right to say that we do need a standard approach uh, in this regard so that everyone understands what is the parameters in terms of, of, of behaviour. I would stress, however, that we, we are evolving in Northern Ireland away from just talking about workplaces being neutral, where any notion of celebration of culture or identity are removed towards a more shared workplaces where within different parameters people do have the ability to express opinions uh, and also to, ex to express their, their identity. But obviously that has to be done in a very carefully balanced uh, way so, and, and those are very, very live debates that are happening uh, ac across the sector. Uh, but we will certainly take on board any particular comments that the member wishes to direct to us. Thank you. I call Mr. Sean Lynch. And the Minister will, will be aware of continuing problems facing people through under the uh, unemployment. Can he indi indicate what discussions he has had with employers and trade unions with regards to the use of a zero arrow contracts? Thank you. Um, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, I'm conscious this is actually appearing on our formal list of, of questions uh, later on, but I mean, I will proceed um, to, uh, to address the question uh, unless um, advised uh, otherwise. Um, the issue of zero hours contract is something that we are uh, conscious of in, in Northern Ireland. Given that the nature of the labour force survey and the sample size, at this stage it's not possible to give a reliable estimate of the number of zero hours contracts that may exist in Northern Ireland. But our, our impression would be that they, they are lesser uh, than their use in other parts of the United Kingdom. Just to take one snapshot, for example, it has been said that um, universities are some of the, of the more common uh, employers who use zero hour contracts. Uh, in, in terms of Northern Ireland, none of our universities uses zero hour contracts. That's just one snapshot from one particular sector that maybe just gives some, some meat to what I'm saying in terms of we suspect it's a lesser problem here. We have commissioned some uh, research to, to try to get a firmer basis and are clearly taking into account what's happening in terms of other jurisdictions before we take any policy decisions on, on any changes or legislative action we may wish to take in Northern Ireland. Of that, uh, draw attention to members. Uh, if questions are, you know, it's very clear the topic of question uh, is, is uh, similar to one that's already listed for oral answer, then, you know, in future, uh, I will not, uh, I'll not call for an answer to that question because I think the, uh, if, if other members of other parties have taken the trouble to lodge a question, then uh, we should have the courtesy to allow that to happen. Uh, in these circumstances, and uh, I'm taking the opportunity just to kind of make it clear that uh, the speakers will normally, from now on, intervene and prevent that happening. Supplementary, Mr. Sean Lynch. 
Speaker, on my uh, uh, previous last call, call you, and I understand what you, you're saying and accept what you're saying. Um, but uh, going to Gwaker Station Ara, I want to thank the Minister for his answer. Could he outline what consideration he has given to the introduction of legislation through the Employment Law Review to appropriately regulate the use of the zero hour contracts that protect the rights of workers? Thank you. Well, the, the issue is not formally part of the, the current um, public consultation that's underway, which closes um, at the beginning of, of November. Um, we could nonetheless take forward a consultation in Northern Ireland on a freestanding basis, and that could tie in with any future employment, employment bill that may come before th this House. I would stress that given that this is a legislative matter, that will be something where the House uh, will need to take its own decision on the, the way forward. Um, we are looking closely in terms of any policy changes that may happen in, in Great Britain. And I think that the one area where people are maybe zeroing in, if I can use that term, um, as a cause of, of particular concern is around exclusivity. There may be circumstances where a zero hours contract is, is beneficial to, to a person, uh, but where most of the concern has been uh, expressed is around em employers saying that a person can only work for that one um, employer and they're on a zero hours contract and that denies them other opportunities to work. So that has emerged as perhaps the the, the single strongest aspect where concern has been expressed, and we may indeed uh, come back to the House in that matter. And before we move on, uh, I've received an apology from Michael Copeland, and uh, I thank him for that. Mr. Ross Hussey has, uh, has also sent an apology and has given uh, an appropriate explanation. So we'll move on, and I call Mr. Samuel Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. I'm here. <laughs> What steps does the Minister take to ensure fair distribution of higher level courses uh, across all campuses of our regional further education colleges? Um, again, I thank the member for his, 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 um, his question. We do have uh, six excellent FE colleges and also our, our universities as well. Um, and it's, it's for, in terms of the, the the courses themselves, it's for the colleges to, to develop their own uh, curricula and um, their prospectuses in terms of the courses that, that are, are available. When it comes to the very particular issue of um, higher education and further education, uh, we do distribute what is essentially a Mazen uh, figure uh, in relation to uh, further education, uh, and that is, is changed based uh, each year on relative performance. The member will note that over uh, recent years we, we have been in a position that we have increased uh, the Madison figure uh, for uh, the colleges across uh, Northern Ireland and indeed there may well be additional uh, changes in that regard in, in the future. And also part-time higher education falls out, outside of Madison and that's an area of particular growth. Um, we have a commitment to seriously increase the number of foundation degrees offered in Northern Ireland because they are something that are of particular use uh, for developing high-level vocational skills uh, and employers are very central to the development of the curricula in, in that regard. Thank you, Mr Gardner, for a supplementary. Thank you, Mr Principal. Deputy uh, Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his response. Ninety-eight per cent of the budget of FE colleges come from the taxpayer. Given this, will the Minister investigate why the Newry campus of the Southern Regional College, with 32% of the catchment population, has 75% of higher education foundations, enrolments, and Portadown and Lurgan, with 32% of the population, have only 25%. Um, I, mean, I, I understand the point that the member is making, and I'm happy to uh, address those issues with Brian Dornan, uh, the director of Southern Regional College. But ultimately, it is a decision for the, the, the colleges themselves uh, to, to place their different courses, uh, and they do that um, out of a reflection of where demand is coming from, and also as to how they, they can best engage uh, with, with employers. And to give one example of very good practice, um, Southern Regional College have worked closely with uh, Norbrook Laboratories uh, in relation to development of apprenticeships and are now moving also to a level four uh, apprenticeship. So that is a very clear sign of how colleges are working together with employers to push the boundaries in terms of what can be offered uh, within the FE uh, sector. And that's something that's very much in the best interests of, of Northern Ireland. But I'll certainly reflect um, the comments made back to the director that specifically the members made. Thank you. And that brings an end to the period for a topic of questions. We will now move on.